one thing we have surely learned at this World Cup is the Japan games are fun. This is the second uh, game and yeah, this was a really good one. Um, not Spain Portugal level, but there was a uh, lot going on and those two teams, um, I would be happy if they make it out of Group H. Um, I want to reserve my judgment until I see Colombia again uh, and Poland. I just have a feeling that Poland, there is something with World Cup in Poland that doesn't work out of late. Uh, Poland was a true world power in the mid 70s, early 80s. Uh, but since then, uh, kind of came off and yeah, Poland even disappeared for a while. Now they're back, they have a decent squad and um, yeah, something's just not clicking. But we're not here to talk about Poland or Colombia, it's Senegal and Japan and what a game it was. Um, it started off, uh, I thought Senegal is gonna beat the shit out of Japan. They were athletic, strong, going forward, and it seemed like one Senegalese can take on two Japanese with ease. And they quickly got their first goal. Um, yes, it was a goalkeeping error, uh, but it put Senegal ahead and I thought now Senegal is cruising. But uh, the funny thing happened is that Japan got a hold of the game. And what I really loved about this one, except for the jersey matchup that I'll talk about later, is that Japan, uh, Japan was uh, small but quick and had a lot of had more of the possession where Senegal was strong and always going straight ahead forward uh, and this approach in styles is something that you only see at the World Cup and that's what makes the World Cup great such matchups from two completely different cultures and then on, on top of it an Italian referee and it's just perfect yeah so uh, Japan got a, uh, got a grip on the game and uh, man, they had many passes. Uh, they tried to avoid being tackled by the Senegalese, made the game very wide and Inui scored a wonderful equalizing goal. And from that moment on, Japan seemed to be in control for most of the game. And in the second half, they threatened uh, at least twice, if not three times. There was this one unlucky header. Uh, that didn't make it through. Then there was uh, the big uh, miss by Osako, where he couldn't connect with the ball. That would have been a surefire goal otherwise. And then uh, Inui, I think it was Inui, uh, made another uh, a strike that hit the crossbar, which would have been another one wonderful goal. Um, so Inui was one really strong player on the Japanese side. The other one I thought is Hasebe was uh, immense. On the Senegal side, I felt that um, San, uh, Sadio Mane didn't show as much. It was more Nyang. And yeah, I told my wife while we were watching that I still have the memory of Nyang hitting the post in Barcelona when Milan had a 2 nothing lead. Barcelona got was 1-0 up. And if Nyang makes that goal, Milan goes through. And yeah, then they lost 4 nothing, thanks to Messi converting two penalties. But I digress. Disgr digr digress. Eh digress. Uh, let's go back to the game. Um, Senegal then around the 70th minute, a little bit ahead, slowly got, asserted themselves as well and then they made a wonderful goal where um, Niang made a crucial deflection and a wonderful goal from a short angle from a very young Senegalese player whose name now escapes me. Uh, it was a beautiful goal and I thought well now Senegal has the upper hand and it could kill off the game. Nope. Japan came right back and Keisuke Honda made an equalizer after, yeah, I don't want to say it was a goalkeeping error, but it was not a good communication between the defender and uh, the goalkeeper on the Senegalese side. And yeah, Okazaki played it across and Honda had an empty goal where he could just shoot in. And then to the credit of both teams, they both went for the win. Not that any more big chances were, but you could feel they are both not happy with just playing a draw, although a draw uh, wasn't the end of the world for both of them. And that's, I think, the biggest credit that I, I can give to this game, that uh, no one was satisfied with this draw. And so, yeah, it went on. Um, Japan pressed. Uh, I think Japan had a little bit more the upper side, but then Senegal at the very end probably could have made one too. So all in all, a really fun game. I really hope 
from what I've seen so far of all the four teams and yes Poland and Colombia are still missing and we have not seen much of Colombia because Colombia had to play a game a man down an entire game more or less so uh, we have to see how the cafeteros uh, will measure up but from what I've seen so far I think Senegal and Japan would be the worthy teams to go through of course now uh, the loser of Poland Colombia will be eliminated if there's no loser they're both on one point and then via the magic of goal differential both could still both losers of the first day could still uh, qualify by a four-way tie I hope it doesn't get that far but it would fit well it would be a fitting end to this group which yes we know is the most interesting one because it's really the one where there are four teams from four different corners of the planet and all four have something to offer uh, that's interesting and makes for interesting watching now i like the jersey matchup i said before um it is a blue against the white with green is um we've seen the uh, matchups like that before at this world cup but um this is a matchup you don't see often um the japan jersey looks uh okay i think it's from all the japan jerseys i've seen lately maybe my third most liked maybe number four but uh it's a decent jersey i just find the i know it's supposed to look like a samurai uniform um but the chain mail is a little bit crudely i i think i was maybe looking for something a little bit more real, realistic but i know what what they're going for and makes for actually a quite a bold look uh stern and it's befitting i wish that the pants were not of a different color than uh the main color of the shirt uh that's looks a little bit weird but um that with the white we had the green uh stripes looked actually quite nice again i would like to have a different shade of green and I really would like, I know Senegal has been playing in white for a long time, but I really would like if Senegal could make use of their colors on the flag. Um, if you play in white, try to get all three colors in there somehow. Red numbers, green accents, uh, yellow, some uh, maybe a yellow color or something, some accent color. It will make the shirt. Uh, it will make the shirt a lot more vibrant. Or make a yellow shirt with green and red. You know, there are endless possibilities. I like those African colors, and that's the one thing that I'm really, really, really missing. Beside the orange of the Netherlands, as you can see, there's no Netherlands here, unfortunately. Um, the yellow, red, green of African teams is missing, and it's missing a lot. And Senegal has it a little bit in there but they don't make good use of it uh, the home jersey at least is white with yellow numbers but got some red somewhere that's just my thought let me know what you think what you thought about the game and yeah i will talk to you soon in the evening after the poland Colombia game if you enjoyed this video please hit like and subscribe to my channel if you've already done so i would like to thank you for your support it is very much appreciated also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.